social media marketing for real estate agents in 2022. In this video, I'm going to break down every single thing you need to know about how to properly leverage all of the relevant social media platforms in order to generate leads, attract business, and close more deals. What I'm going to do is walk step by step through how to properly use Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Google to make sure that you know what you should be running ads on, what you should be spending, what you should be posting, how often you should be posting, so that in this one video, by the end of it, you'll know how to properly approach each platform in 2022 in order to crush it on social media and skyrocket your production. What's up, guys? My name is Mike Sharp with the XP Realty. I train thousands of agents every single year to scale their business the modern way with social media. And if you do want my free training that breaks this down even further and shows even more context and examples, just drop a comment below and I'll give you my free training. But without further ado, let's walk through some of the relevant platforms in 2022, actually all of them, so that you actually know how to properly approach these because a lot has changed. And I want to make sure that if you're investing your time as you should be into these modern platforms, that you've got the right strategy to approach it with. Let's start with Facebook, which is basically the pioneer of social media globally um, that really took things over but there's a lot of changes that happened in 2022 and i'm gonna break this down for you so the first thing and this has kind of been the last two years is that it's a pay-to-play platform the organic posts on facebook do not get much engagement it is more so like a google my business where the organic posting is more so for things like validation for basically being a running case study or portfolio of the quality of work. Now, I'm gonna loop back in and talk to you about what you should be posting, but let's talk about a couple other things that you need to be mindful of with Facebook. Um, number one is lead cost is going up. Um, a lot of things are happening with privacy rules, a lot of things with the iOS updates, a lot of things are also changing in terms of the targeting settings for detailed targeting where we don't have some of the flexibility that we used to. And this seems to be an ongoing trend where it's making it increasingly difficult to easily generate warm leads. Now you can still generate warm and hot leads if you know what you're doing, which I dive deeper into the training, but it is something where now in the past, basically every agent, even if they didn't know what the heck they were doing, they could run a Facebook ad and generate leads. Now you actually have to understand what you're doing with top, middle, bottom of funnel and being able to nurture people by leading with value and understanding how to follow up. And I think that's one of the big things, which is looking at the cost per lead is going to be cheap. However, it's going to require more follow up. And this is because oftentimes the quality of leads are going to be a little bit lower and a lot of agents don't have the diligence or consistency of following up, knowing that the average lead starts to actually become a potential client or a conversation at least after the seventh touch point. And most realtors don't even get to that point. So let's talk about what you should be doing on Facebook. So the first thing is you should be in terms of posting, you should be posting all of your client work. Um, and what I mean by that is this is going to be all of your just listed, just sold, coming soon, happy clients outside of the property and inspections and everything related to your business. Now, yes, you can share this on your personal page from your business page. You cannot go vice versa. You cannot share from your personal page to your business page, but it's going to be a good way to keep you top of mind with everybody that's a friend with you on Facebook. But that's more or less it is property tours, videos about community updates, anything that again, you could basically use as a running case study of your portfolio and quality of work. That's all that Facebook page should be considered as is a portfolio of your work and proving that you're getting the job done. Now for ads, that's a different perspective. So let's talk about the ads for a second. When we're looking at the ads of Facebook, my recommendation knowing that the cost per lead is going up is used to be able to get away with five, $10 a day on Facebook, not anymore. You're going to have to be spending about $20 a day in order to start to get the right data in order to fine tune, create custom audiences for retargeting. And eventually the one really cool thing that's working extraordinarily well this year in Facebook for advertising is the special ad lookalike audiences. Now, what this is, is in the past, you just had a lookalike audience. And this was essentially giving you the opportunity to upload your database of past clients that worked with you. Um, and it would basically tell Facebook, go find more people like that, which is really exciting because when you're running a traditional Facebook ad, you basically are just blanketing your entire city or a little, you know, 15 mile radius. If your city's bigger than that, um, 
and then just hoping that Facebook's algorithm identifies the right people. Whereas with the special ad audiences and the lookalike audiences, you can upload your database of past clients. And what this is going to do is this is gonna say, hey, Facebook, based on these people that actually went through the entire buying or selling process, go find people that are the most like them. So now instead of just targeting a million people in your city, you're getting Facebook to say, hey, based on these 100 people that have worked with me, go find the 50,000 that are the most likely to be buying or selling this year. So special ad lookalike audiences and custom audiences for retargeting is really what you want to be doing. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, what should I be doing in terms of the ad? So what type of ad should I be running? So there's a couple different things here. Now, because Facebook ads are becoming more saturated, yes, the custom list of homes under the average price point in the market still does great. Now, if you're in a market where that is becoming a little bit more saturated, what you want to be doing is you want to explore different basically economy specific type ads. So for example, a couple of the agents that are doing really well in my organization at eXp are crushing it with new construction and new builder pre-construction ads because again, it's an early adopter opportunity to help people. There's a lot of people I know that are also saying, hey, the market's crazy, buyers are losing out on deals. Well, let's create a VIP list that people can sign up to so that we can give off market properties or coming soon properties before they hit the MLS to these people. There's a lot of other people that are also looking at relocation based on different you know, government from California to Texas and Florida and things like that. So looking at what is relevant to what we are dealing with today. So yes, you're always gonna have the traditional ads that you can pump out of $20 a day, like the custom list of homes. However, my recommendation is to get a little bit more creative, lead with value because convenience sells. If you make your ad convenient for people relocating, for people looking to, you know, get an investment property or to get into pre-construction, that is gonna convert much higher. So now let's look at Instagram and the big change here is vertical short form video. Um, so short form, uh, is basically what's crushing it, which is on Instagram is going to be reels. And if you want to really build your personal brand on Instagram, and that's usually what Instagram is for is creating top of mind brand awareness, remaining top of mind, and more so on the branding side. Yes, you can attract clients from it, but it's more so of a brand's perspective. So my recommendation is reels and stories. They're gonna be the two kind of secrets to properly leveraging Instagram. You don't have to spend any ads directly because again, you're able to just run that natively through Facebook, but let's look at what we should be doing. So for reels, my recommendation is to be doing at least three per week. And one of the things that I do in order to get this done a little bit easier now that I'm gonna start posting once a day is I just go out once a month with my video team and batch 30 videos back to back. They're short, they're one take, they're under a minute, and you're usually going to be video doing videos that you know what you're talking about. Or one of the best ways to do it is looking at property tours. So these work really well. And so does information about your city. There's a couple of people like Noah Ward in my group, Ken Oswitz, a lot of these people are doing really well by just talking about you know, comparisons between different communities in your market center, talking about the, you know, top five things or top five restaurants or anything related to your community. Community information is doing extraordinarily well. You don't have to be dancing around. You don't have to be doing silly things. And the same is going to go for TikTok, but property tours and valuable local content does very well. And then on stories, this is going to be daily. You do not want to go a single day without posting a story, whether this be a quote, whether this be you just talking about your day, whether this be sharing food for thought or some behind the scenes of you doing showings, previewing a property or anything like that. This is the best way to stay top of mind, especially if you add your past, current and potential clients on Instagram. This is the easiest way to nurture your database in a very neutral way and keep top of mind without having to call them up from your CRM and say, hey, Sally, uh, do you know anybody looking to buy or sell this month? Uh, no, okay, I'll call you next month and ask the same question. So my recommendation is to kind of treat it as brand awareness and staying top of mind, as well as building your brand locally, which is why the organic engagement of Reels is so high, and that's what we need to be leveraging. Now let's come down to the one that most of you probably know I'm quite a big fan of, uh, which is going to be YouTube. If you look at any of the agents in my organization that are crushing it at eXp, they are doing it with YouTube. No ad spend, not doing anything special other than using an iPhone or a standard camera. And there's agents that are on track this year in their second year real estate to do over $100 million in production as solo agents, entirely free with no prospecting through YouTube. So YouTube is, basically a must if you really want to crush it going forward and the reason being is a couple things number one it creates leverage 
Number two, it's evergreen. And I'll unpack these in a second. Number three is that it is building relationships. And number four, finally, is it is showing versus telling. And let me kind of break these down and then I'm gonna to talk to you about what you should be doing on YouTube in 2022 as a real estate agent. Number one, it creates leverage, right? If you look at like Subin, for example, in my organization, if you break down the amount of views he gets per day from his free iPhone videos that he edits himself, and this is the agent that's on track to do $100 million this year, actually quite a bit more than that. He is essentially, based on the views he's getting per day, prospecting 27 days every 24 hours. The average realtor may, at best, prospect two to three hours a day, not even seven days a week. You can't compete with that. It creates leverage of your time. So YouTube is really powerful because it allows you to start to scale your business because you're no longer having to only grow your business when you're investing your time into it. It's evergreen, it lasts forever. If you prospect the traditional way, or if you run a Facebook ad, or if you run a Google ad, your business will either stop growing when you stop putting money into the ads, or it will stop growing if you stop investing time into prospecting. With YouTube, because it's evergreen, the videos live there forever. So as long as, the caveat, you actually understand how to optimize your content, which again is shown in my free training, then your videos will last there and can be attracting clients for five, 10 years from now. It builds relationships. Every single person that I know that gets into real estate says they get into real estate because aside from wanting to build wealth and things like that, they love connecting with people. Well, they're trying to build their business by cold calling and by running ads. Two things that will never allow you to establish a connection. They work, don't get me wrong, but it is not the way to establish a connection or relationship with somebody because there's no personability to it, right? Whereas when somebody's consuming your content on YouTube, they're gonna get a feel of who you actually are, that they like what you're doing, that you see you're doing it differently, and they'll start to build a bond. And this is why, you know, about eight agents a day book directly into my calendar about joining my group at eXp Realty, and almost all of them say, Mike, it's surreal talking to you one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom because I've watched our YouTube videos, I feel like I know you. That's really powerful because we've established a relationship or a connection before we've even met. And what this is gonna do for your production is it's going to drastically increase your conversion rate. You're not gonna have to sell yourself. People are coming to you for you. And showing versus telling. A lot of agents say, oh my God, I go above and beyond for my clients. And they can't even prove it. But if you're showing it on YouTube by creating beautiful property tours, by highlighting communities, by giving market updates and knowing and showing that you know the stats, this is why buyers and sellers reach out to you from YouTube. So let's talk about what you should be doing on YouTube. You should be doing videos related to things like relocation, property tours, and living in your city. And the final one, which is the only non-evergreen one, is market updates. And in the Social Age Academy, I actually give a full six month YouTube plan that's proven to work. But uh, now let's go on to TikTok. Um, so this is one that uh, I'm getting better at, and but I've, thankfully I've helped a lot of people crush it on TikTok. And there's a lot of people in my organization that are crushing it on TikTok that I'm just so proud of, and I'm learning from them, uh, which is really cool. So TikTok, again, there's a couple little nuances of TikTok that we're gonna dive into. Um, and one of the biggest things is just looking at the fact that the organic, engagement is massive. It is just through the roof, right? The organic engagement on, on TikTok is by far the biggest of any social platform. No ad spend, no budget, just straight organic content. Now, another thing that's a bit interesting is the fastest growing demographic on TikTok is 25 to 35, which is the average first time home buyer and first time home seller, right? So now you're starting to see a demographic that is more along the lines of the clients that we're gonna be working with, which is why I've got a ton of agents in my organization of the Wolfpack crushing deals every single month off their TikTok. And the nuance of TikTok that I think is just a little bit quirky for people to get used to is the frequency or the cadence of posting, which is going to be more or less, unfortunately, uh, one per day. Now, there is very easy ways to scale your content and to create one a day because it is such a raw platform where you don't have to you know, get studio lights, get a professional camera, get everything all set up. It's very raw in the moment. So once you find your flow, um, it's actually not that difficult to do one a day, but it's very daunting for people in the beginning. It just takes some time to get used to. Now, the beauty about TikTok is once we start looking at what you can do to take that organic traffic and funnel it to your bio link. And this is why when you're leveraging TikTok, you can connect your IG and your YouTube. Now, you can also create a link tree 
um, and this is what I recommend in terms of the bio link. So you can use a link tree, which is going to have things like buyer's guides, seller's guides, relocation guides, booking an appointment with you. And you can also connect the two primary platforms that you should be leveraging in order to attract clients and build your personal brand. So it's great for funneling it to other platforms that are going to allow you to convert even higher with DMs and being able to converse with people like that. So what type of content is working very well? Very similar to Reels. If again, you don't want to be dancing around and doing all kinds of silly stuff like that, you don't have to. Um, if you look at a lot of the agents in my group, and I'll probably post a couple of their TikToks in the description of this video in the pinned comment. Um, if you look at it, a lot of it is just like local info and property tours. Another couple things is behind the scenes. So BDS, um, just showing what's going on in the day in the life of a realtor. People are genuinely curious about that. Um, and then a couple other things is if you want to get creative, leveraging the trends, right? Taking some of the trending sounds, trending videos that are going on in just the generic world and then applying it to real estate does really well. Now let's talk about LinkedIn. Now this is something that again, a lot of people kind of avoid, don't really spend much time on. And to be honest, I don't blame you because um, it can work well, but it's not really worth spending too much time on. So my recommendation, if we're being completely honest here, is to just cross promote the content that you'd be sharing on your Facebook page, Facebook business page. Um, it's a great way. Again, you can crush it on LinkedIn. Don't get me wrong. I know a lot of people crushing it, but it takes a lot of undivided attention, learning, effort, skill sets. Whereas I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you guys. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Cross promote whatever you've got on Facebook. Make sure that you've got your bio optimized, a nice cover image and a banner, and that you've got your experience dialed in with certain keywords that are going to allow you to be found as a realtor. But more or less, that's it. And please don't ever spend any money on LinkedIn ads. So now let's go to the last one, which is going to be Google. Now, really important first and foremost is going to be Google My Business, which is also now called Google Business Profile kind of changed the name recently and don't know why, but it is what it is. So Google My Business, Google Business Profile, um, this is a must. And one thing that you really need to be doing is focusing on reviews. The more people that you're working with, you wanna make sure that every single time you work with a client, you get a review for both your Google My Business and your Facebook page, period. Every single client. If you were not, you were leaving a ton of money on the table period. So you have to make this a priority. It's going to allow you to rank higher. It's going to allow you to get more clients. And it's just going to be, again, a testament to the quality of work that you do. Whereas if you've worked with 50 clients, you've got two reviews. How do people know you've worked with 50 clients that were happy? They will never. So you need to make sure that you're doing this. And again, similar to what you're doing on your Facebook page, just in terms of the listings and solds, I like to post that on Google My Business because again, it's showing people that come across you and search for, you know, realtor near me or best realtor in this community or best realtor in the city and you pop up. If you show a running case study of the quality of your photos and things like that, um, it's just going to give people more context as to why you're the best one to work with. Um, and then with Google Ads, Google Ads work really well. Pros and cons as we wrap up here with Google Ads is the con, starting first, is that it's going to be more expensive than Facebook ads. The pro is that you're gonna get less leads that are higher quality. So my recommendation, if you are not the best at follow-up and if you have a slightly more flexible budget, is to actually spend your money on Google Ads just because, again, you're gonna get warmer leads and ultimately you're gonna to have to do less follow-up and you're gonna convert likely higher. You're just gonna to have to understand that you're gonna to have to spend a little bit more money and know how to kind of optimize it, which again, I have my training. So hopefully this gives you a pretty decent idea of how to get started with social media for realtors and how to use social media marketing and social media lead generation in order to get more real estate clients. If you have any other questions about any of these platforms, drop a comment below, uh, but hopefully this gives you some clarity and you can bring this all together, choose which platforms you feel like are going to be the best fit for you. My recommendation is going to be YouTube. And from there, uh, hopefully we're going to make 2022 the best year of your business. So thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.